You cooked something, Zenitsu? Really? Just for me? Uh, yeah! Food? We're at! Inosuke demanded, whipping his head around as if rice balls were about to suddenly be pelted in his direction. The idiot even looked straight up. Uh, I only made enough for me and traveler -chan. Yeah. Zenitsu looked away from Tanjiro. Sorry. With that, he reached out his hand to you, and somehow he still felt a jolt of delighted shock when you actually took it. So, what did you make? Um, it's a surprise! From the courtyard, he escorted you around the side of the building and into the spare kitchen of the guest house. It was dimly lit and free of all messes or cooking supplies. Not to mention you didn't smell a trace of anything edible, short of the usual hint wafting off the canned spices. He was quiet as you examined the room, and he swiftly shuffled together some cookware. Well, we better get started! <laughs> he squeaked out in a high-pitched, panicky sort of way, and it was obvious that he was sweating through that forced laugh. Liar. Mm. You smirked and Zenitsu visibly flinched. You said you already made food. You realized that must have been why he averted Tanjiro's gaze a moment ago, as he had seen right through that fib. Ah, about that! Hmm? You crossed your arms with an insinuating smile and his face turned red. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. He fiddled with his fingers and stared at the ground. I may have forgotten some ingredients. <laughs> All of them, it seems. You quipped and his posture shrunk once more. Hmm, don't tease me. He looked up at you with big sad eyes and pouted lips. I just, um... <sighs> he sighed, finally gathering enough composure to be honest. I just missed you after you stopped staying in our room. I couldn't think of a good enough excuse in the moment like the others did. So I made it up to spend time with you. You felt a tingling warmth fill up your chest at his confession. How could someone manage to make guile adorable, you wondered. Your smile widened when his bashfulness heightened. I'm sorry I, uh, <clears throat> smothered you a bit. <laughs> it's all right. To be honest, I didn't mind it as much as Tanjiro did. You bit your lips sheepishly and Zenitsu lit up with an unbridled blush. Ah! I'm so glad you agreed to stay with us again, Traveler-chan. The blonde squeezed your arm and rubbed his cheek on your shoulder. I didn't sleep nearly as well without you. I was worried I couldn't protect you in another room. Darkness had fallen and you noticed Tanjiro had returned from town with a cute little trinket for Nezuko. Zenitsu twirled and hummed a happy tune as he fluffed out your futon next to his. Happy dreams, happy me, cause next to Traveler I will sleep. <laughs> Where'd you get those, Tanjiro? You asked when he offered you a hand-pulled sugar creation on a stick. Turns out there was some kind of festival going on downtown. It probably would have been almost over by the time I came to get you all. So I brought you each one of these instead. That was nice of you. Thanks so much. And I got this for Nezuko. He pulled out a small sun pendant and displayed it to you. Ooh, that's pretty. Did you hear that, Nezuko-chan? Zenitsu asked as the girl emerged from her box. There was a festival tonight. I wish I could have taken you. Fireworks are so romantic. He noticed her ignoring him and instead eyeing the array of decorative sweets laid out on Tanjiro's futon. Oh yeah, those are cute, aren't they? Almost too cute to eat. Which one's your favorite? She picked up the one in the shape of a bunny and Zenitsu's warm smile widened. My favorite's the dolphin one. Your jaw dropped when the blonde proceeded to snatch Tandro's gift right out of his hands and present it to Nezuko. The brunette boy's eye twitched. See what Tanjiro got you? He's a good brother, right? Zenitsu flashed a cautious glimpse at him, hoping flattery would be enough to keep him from being smacked across the room. What a beautiful necklace for a beautiful girl! He glanced over his shoulder at you and noticed you whispering something in Tanjiro's ear. Crap! 
He was too busy laying it on thick that he missed what you had said. He was certain he heard his name, too. Say, Tanjiro, want me to get Zenitsu to leave your sister alone? That's what you had whispered. You were definitely within earshot of the blonde, but you knew Zenitsu's powerful hearing wasn't an issue if he was paying you no heed. Tanjiro pulled back and gave you a skeptical look. I don't think you can, he replied in defeat. This time Zenitsu saw you wink at Tanjiro. The game was about to begin, and you cleared your throat to prepare. <clears throat> Nezuko-chan, he emphasized loudly to regain your attention. Want me to read you a bedtime story before sunrise tomorrow? Zenitsu! You donned a hurt expression and rose to your feet. How could you? Silence fell over the room at the abrupt mood change, and you noticed it was much easier than you thought to get in character. Eh? He blinked, perplexed. You made me think I was special to you! You turned your head away with theatric finesse. You led me on, believing you wanted me to marry you! And then you flirt with another girl right in front of me! You gestured to Nezuko, who was looking back and forth between the two of you with a blank, confused expression. <laughs> How cruel. You wiped away a crocodile tear and Zenitsu's mouth fell open. His malfunctioning brain only now seemed to be catching up with your intent. Wait, you seriously want my attention? He pointed at himself in disbelief. Humph! <laughs> With an elegant and overdramatic whoosh of your kimono, you stormed off into the darkness. Traveler-chan? A sudden panic erupted in his voice. Traveler-chan, wait! He tripped over himself to rush after you. Come back! You can have all of it! It's yours! <laughs> Tanjiro chuckled at just how effective your methods were. He felt silly for doubting you. But then... He realized that little tear of yours didn't have the air of falsehood he anticipated. He didn't smell any kind of insincerity in your sadness, which could only indicate that you were actually upset by the act of Zenitsu sharing his affections. Is she aware of that? Tanjiro wondered. A few minutes later, curiosity got the better of him. He peeked through the fusuma and immediately sniffed the acrid sting of your regret on the air. He then saw Zenitsu softly weeping at your feet near the edge of the water gardens, and the remorseful grimace on your face. You never meant to make him cry. Moments before. Well, maybe I should just leave. I'm clearly not wanted here. You crossed your arms and huffed through your nose. Wait, when had your playful game transformed into actual resentment? <gasps> He insisted much too dramatically, though you knew you deserved the theatrics after that little show you just put on in the bedroom. No, you wouldn't. You have Tanjiro and Nezuko-chan to protect you. You took care to punctuate her name with an impression of his love-struck voice. They're both stronger than me anyhow. No! He clutched onto your kimono desperately, sliding down to his knees to grovel. I mean, I die of a broken heart! His words stopped you dead in your tracks. <laughs> when his pitiful whimpers escalated into full-blown sobs, you hastily tried to correct your mistake, sputtering out as many words of absolution as you could. Unfortunately, it was too late, as the Nitsu had prostrated himself face down in the dirt, heart overflowing with guilt. This was when Tanjiro came outside. Like, Zenitsu, please stop. You begged as gently as you could, but the damage had already been done. I told you I forgive you, okay? Let's just forget this whole thing. Ugh, I'm scum! I'm not worthy of the ground you walk on! He wailed, spiraling past the point of consolation. How could I be so despicable as to make a beautiful girl cry? I don't deserve to be loved! That's not true, Zenitsu! You helplessly reached out to the boy in despair, but it didn't seem to do any good. He only tightened his fists on the ground. I'm not crying, see? Please stand up. I'm an unfaithful cad! A scoundrel! A disappointment like everyone always said! Uh, Zenitsu! You couldn't take
take it anymore, and you fell to your knees, yanking him into an embrace. He allowed it, but the waterworks didn't stop. This is my fault, okay? I'm sorry. You clutched him tighter. I overreacted because I was jealous. He froze and his sobs stopped immediately. But I never meant to make you feel this way, Zenitsu. I mean it. So please don't cry anymore. It breaks my heart to see you cry. You could already feel moisture stinging your own eyes. <laughs> Jealous? Zenitsu felt his heart skip a beat. Of what? That you were giving more attention to Nezuko than me. It was a horrible thing for me to do, and I am so, so sorry, Zenitsu. Can you ever forgive me? So... He pulled back and looked at you with big, shimmering eyes. I didn't hurt your feelings? I mean, maybe a little. You admitted and his eyes instantly welled up with tears again. <laughs> but I know it wasn't your fault! You stumbled out hastily to keep his lower lip from quivering and starting this whole mess all over again. It was... It was my fault! <laughs> he cried out, tears spilling down his cheeks again. No, it wasn't! Yes! I was trying to make you jealous on purpose! I never thought it would actually work! Wait, what? You blinked at him in disbelief. Little Zenitsu played a mind game on you? He seriously outsmarted you and turned the tables? You just inadvertently played right into his hands and became the victim? Your face flushed hot, and at this point you had no idea if it was from embarrassment or suppressed rage. He must have read the latter on your twisted expression, for he started bawling out apologies once more. Yeah! I'm so sorry, Traveler Chad! Zenitsu tackled you backwards to the ground as if a normal hug simply wasn't violent enough to convey how immensely contrite he was. I won't do it again, I swear! Hugs are nice, but you know what body part doesn't feel good when being hugged too tightly? Your windpipe. At this moment, your neck was constricted by his strong, noodly arms, and your lungs were slowly being crushed by the weight of his body. Yep, this is apparently how I'm going to die. Zenitsu didn't notice this predicament of yours as he was too busy nuzzling his forehead back and forth against you as he wove a tapestry of apology. Sorry, 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 Suddenly you were pulled from the brink of death as Tanjiro had come to your rescue, chopping Zenitsu on the back of the neck and rendering him unconscious. You finally sat up and breathed air, looking down sympathetically at the limp blob of yellow sprawled helplessly across your lap.